Today, I want to begin with a simple message. A very straightforward one. Death. Two helicopters. Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I want to present you the third Swedish 40mm boy at rank 6, the STRF 9056. It is at battle rating 9.7, which it shares with the very similar LVKV-9040C, and it's also not that much different to the STRF-9040C. So those three Swedish 40mm boys um, are infamous in my books because, you know, those rapid-firing APDF dart dispensers really hurt a lot. However, they all have kind of their unique distinct features. The STRF-9040C has a bit of add-on armor, and it has a bit higher penetrating AP FSD is run. The LDKV-9040C has then also the radar to help you in your helicopter hunting season and the STRF-9056 has some very unique and special ATGMs. More on them in just a moment. So let's talk briefly about the rest of the vehicle while you also can admire the gameplay in the background and can already observe how the missiles work. So, at first glance, we have here a vehicle that is very fragile. The best is the best armor is 20 millimeter, and yeah, that's about it. It's very, very fragile. It will hull break quite a lot. And then you have a speed of 70 kilometers per hour when it comes to the mobility. So, the top speed is 70 kilometers per hour. You have also in reverse 45, which is pretty good. You have neutral steering, and your horsepower to turn ratio is barely above 20. Now that's okay, but you won't really race to any positions and then just send AT gyms all over the battlefield. First of all, you only have eight, and in the launcher itself, you only have two. And also, just like with the Bradley at battle rating 8.0 in the American Tech Tree, you cannot really use them at uh, at high speeds. So you have to go to four kilometers per hour, basically the um, automatic driving forward mode one aka first gear and that is then where you can peek around the corner and still have the uh, launcher deployed it takes quite a while and this is a little bit painful in close quarters because you know everybody is a rattlesnake on crack and just um i don't know <laughs> an expert on on some kind of methamphetamine to just boost their reaction times it's top tier right everybody has a stabilizer everybody has thermal imaging you have thermal imaging as well uh, in very good quality not just for the gunner but also the commander which is really helpful then also this tank can scout and this is also pretty powerful now let's talk about the 40 millimeter here for just a moment you have 24 rounds in the ready rack then you have a reload of 0.3 seconds which you know can deal quite a lot of damage especially if you catch an enemy mbt uh, on, on a side or you just simply uh, damage their gun breach or the turret ring etc on top of this, you also have a decent uh, gun depression of minus 8 degrees and 35 degrees of gun elevation, which is helpful versus those pesky helicopters. Then you, on top of this, have 34.9 degrees per second turret rotation and an elevation speed of 23.26 degrees per second. Those are weird values. Don't ask me where they are coming, but that's the value for a fully trained uh, ace crew. I don't know what's with those weird values. Basically, um, 24 degrees or 23 degrees per second gun elevation and 35 degrees per second turret traverse. That's really cool. That's really nice. But the stabilizer itself for the 40 millimeter, despite being obviously the same as the LVKV-9040C and the STRF-9040C, does also not work at higher speeds. Don't ask me why. Maybe this is kind of linked to the uh, ATGM system. I'll talk to Gaijin about this uh, you know I'm curious what they're what they're saying about this um, the next thing is then obviously the ATGM now why is it so special and what are they well first of all you have eight of those 150 millimeter RB56 
Bill Chu, ATGMs. And the statistics on them are not really that amazing on first glance, it's more how they work. So 250 meters per second maximum speed, I've seen faster ATGMs. Firing range is 2.2 kilometers, that's decent and usable in most situations, but I've also seen better, uh, wider range ATGMs. The TNT equivalent is 2.72 kilograms on the uh, heat warhead, that creates 510 millimeters of penetration. Now you might say, oh my god, there is all this composite armor and ear protection, space armor, whatever, that reduces that further. But actually no, because what you do is you aim at the enemy tank, you fire the missile and then the, fi the missile flies above where you actually target the enemy tank and explodes above the tank. And I'm not quite sure how the missile does it. Maybe the warhead is arranged in such a way that it points down or the missile flips itself just a millisecond before it goes off. But effectively the heat beam comes from above and goes through the roof where the armor is the thinnest, where there is no ear protection, where there is no composite armor. So this then hurts quite a lot, especially versus Soviet tanks where there are only two, um, where, where there are only three crew members in a tank and you know, you can take out two of them by hitting the turret or blow up the ammunition, whatever. This is very effective. But to bring this all together, this is a bit iffy. And I have to say, to make this work is cool. If somebody is behind cover, if you're in, a, in some sort of Mex Mexican standoff, the enemy tank is behind cover, and you just simply launch that missile over cover, and it just explodes over the enemy tank and does some serious damage. If it doesn't outright kill that tank, it at least can take out the gun breach or set them on fire or, you know, still hurt or outright kill. Um, quite a few of the crew members. So it always is kind of very threatening. Again, at first glance, 510 millimeters of penetration doesn't sound that much, but versus the top plating of a tank, of an MBT, that is more than enough in most uh, situations. Uh, it is not always a one shot, especially if you don't precisely know where the enemy tank is exactly, but it also works like a charm versus smoke if you know exactly where the enemy tank is. So that makes for a very, very powerful support vehicle. That's what it is. Um, this is not a frontline brawler, um, but if you prepare ambushes, etc., you have now a third. 40 millimeter boy and you know that lineup is already pretty strong um if you up tier them as well it makes little to no difference whether the enemy is an xm1 or the enemy is an uh, strv122 in a mixed battle whatever it is really really good when it comes to holding the enemy's advance and that makes this thing very powerful now you have to get used to it a little bit, you have to train a little bit, you have to know how long it exactly uh, takes to deploy it, under which circumstances you can use it, etc. But when you master it, I think this is really a very versatile killing machine. And the Swedish never had any problems at top tier. Um, but you know, the funny thing is that if you have a good tank, it always costs you. And so this costs uh, 250,000 RP and per death you have to pay fully upgraded 11,756 silver lines. But it's kind of worth it and it's kind of in line with the LVKV 9040C and the STRF 9040C. So you know, you're really good at supporting your team with scouting, with uh, being the anti-camper kind of and that alone is really cool. Then you can hold yourself versus helicopters and planes in close proximity. And you know, the 40 millimeter AP FSTS versus enemy MBTs, you've seen it, what kind of damage it does. So nothing wrong with this tank. I really, really like it. And um, I think when it comes all together, the question is why has no other nation something like this? I'm, I'm seriously questioning this. This is now already the third. Now, 
I'm not really a fan of you know those 40 millimeters when it comes to the balancing aspect but when it comes to fun when it comes to being fun and effective yes that thing is it again the only thing that really holds it back is the lack of stabilizer or working stabilizer that is uh, for top tier and also the long deploy time of those ATGMs um, but also you must not really um, sacrifice uh, your own mental health by always desperately trying to make use of those missiles. Sometimes just blab the enemy with the 40mm. This is something that I actually figured out is uh, quite a common thing. And you know, that's already it for me today with my first impressions on this third Swedish 40mm boy, the STRF 9056, a cool tank. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please give this video a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.